Polscy czytelnicy znają ją z doskonałych książek, ale też dlatego, że jest laureatką nagrody imienia Ryszarda Kapuścińskiego z 2014 roku. Gościem Smak Książki.pl jest Elizabeth Asbrink. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello. Do you still agree with your grandmother that there are only two kind of people in the world, good people and bad people? Well, of course I agree with my grandmother, but I prefer to talk about good actions and bad actions because I think that a good person can also make bad actions and a bad person can do good things. So the world is complicated. In your opinion, now in the world we have more good people or bad people or the same number? Uh, I think the world has problems today, but it's a lot better than we think. Things are actually getting better in a lot of ways, so uh, we shouldn't be too impatient. I'm optimistic. Mm -hmm. Do you think that now we can say that 1947 it was uh, a promise of new world, of new beginning in the world? Definitely. It's, it's a year with great hope and a lot of thinking and building towards the future. The people in 1947 wanted to make the world better because they didn't want the war and everything connected to it to ever happen again. So uh, we have a lot of moral improvements to make the moral ground more secure so all these terrible immoral actions would not occur again. And there are several examples of that, and people looked forward. So um, now this order that was shaped after the Second World War is, is fragile. And we who want to protect it, we have to be vigilant. But I don't think it's threatened. It's just a time of insecurity. Do you have uh, your own ranking things which happened in 1947, which was the most important? Well, that's a difficult question, of course, because I have the, my personal story, because it was a decisive year in my family history. So that is, of course, important to my private life. But then I think uh, the creation of the universal human rights is one very important thing. The Nuremberg trials. We only talk about one big trial, but there was actually 13 trials and they're very important in creating what is to come. And of course, when it looks when we look at Europe, the martial help uh, and also the Soviet occupying such a large piece of Europe and stopping the communist countries from receiving help and stopping their development in so many ways. This we still see the consequences of today and this is a major important event, yes. Did we learn something from, from our history? Or sometimes you think maybe not at all? Well, I'd like to quote uh, the Polish poet Wisława Szymborska there because as she writes in a poem, wise people learn from their mistakes, unwise people do not. Uh, this is this doesn't change there are always wise people who will learn and there's always stupid people who will not learn and and this is a constant through human history we we should just be careful not to think that history repeats itself because it doesn't we should know our history because then we can be the judge of our present but it doesn't repeat itself, so we have to be aware of what is the problems today. We're not in the 30s. Uh, we're not standing in for a, in, in a terrible situation where everything will go to hell. Uh, so, um, as I said, we should be vigilant and uh, we should know our history. In one of your interviews, you said that you are like a compass. What, what it means? Well, um, I maybe thought of that I, I work quite intuitive, intuitively. Uh, I go where um, the time leads me and where I react to things. So in that sense, I'm, I haven't decided that's where I'm going. I sort of search my way to the points that hurt me. 
I work with pain somehow. I work with memory. I work with forget, forgetting. And these, are the, these abstract things is my working material. I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but that's the best I can say. Mm. Uh, Sweden is well known, for example, in Poland from IKEA and Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Mm -hmm. Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, was taken care by David Lagerkrantz and he wrote a great book about Zlatan and you wrote a book about uh, the man who discovered the, 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 the IKEA. Uh, what Swedish people said after your book? Well, uh, different people said different things. A lot of people said, I, because what I describe is, is the context where the IKEA founder grew up and, and uh, also the Sweden at the same time in the 30s and the 40s, before Sweden became a good country because Sweden has a history of um, goodness and uh, wanting to be good, but it, you can actually date it to October 1943. That's when Sweden becomes good. And I describe the Sweden before that, when it was very um, hostile towards foreigners. Uh, it absolutely wouldn't ha have any Jewish refugees because there was anti-Semitism in the system. And uh, also, um, Difficult. Well, there were Nazis, and Ingvar Kamprad, the founder of IKEA, was in fact a member of the Swedish Nazi Party. So, um, some people said, "What is this Sweden? I don't recognize it." But they processed it. They were a bit shocked, but they processed it, and we had very interesting talks. Other people said that I was wrong to uh, expose this about Ingvar Kamprad. History of each country is written every day. Uh, what is the Sweden after the terrorist an attack on the uh, drone in Gatan? Well, that's a good question. I, I actually don't think it changed a lot. Um, it was a terrible, terrible terrorist attack and it created a wave of solidarity uh, because it was in the center of Stockholm and um, people were cut off from their jobs. They couldn't get home because the, the center was isolated and the trains were stopped and everything was just stopped. So people had to walk home from their jobs and some people couldn't get home. So foreign people, people who didn't know each other, they texted on Twitter and in uh, social media, here on this address I have an extra bed, you can come here. And all over Stockholm, people opened their homes, they gave each other lifts, they helped each other, even though they didn't know each other. I think that is the big uh, win from this terrible crime. We understood that we would be solidaric when things like this happen, and it was a beautiful thing. Uh, otherwise, I think there are other things that have affected Sweden more. For instance, the, it's become a split country uh, because of the huge intake of refugees from the Syrian war. And I think about 50% of the Swedes think it's very good and the right thing to do. And they are prepared to help every man, woman and child who has escaped the war. And they do it on a grassroots level. A lot of beautiful things are happening. And then there's the other 50% who are afraid that this is too much and that things will go wrong and that uh, we're letting in good people who aren't good for the country. Finally, what can you say about your new book? Well, it actually is a, a bit about Zlatan Ibrahimovic. It's, it's a book about Sweden and Swedish self-image and Swedish illusions. And I write about 60 uh, pieces about separate words or expressions in the Swedish language that sort of become a picture of what Sweden is. And Slatan Ibrahimovic is there because um, when he started as a football player, everyone uh, described him as un-Swedish. They thought he was, you know, he's born in Sweden. But they thought he was un-Swedish because he wasn't a team player, he was putting himself first, he was pride, proud about what he was good at. 
things like that. And now, uh, the car, Volvo, they have him in their biggest commercial. He's the center of it. He's declaring the Swedish national hymn. He's the essence of Swedishness. So, what has happened? Has Slaten changed? No. Sweden has changed. So, and what is your favorite Swedish word? Ah, oh, that's difficult. But there is a word that Swedes say very, very often. And it's in Swedish it's endligen. And it's in English it would be finally. And it's because Swedes they seem to be longing all the time, you know, finally holiday, finally Friday, finally I'm home, finally it rains, finally it's sun, finally it's Christmas. Things like that. We say it all the time. So I think the Swedes are they're people of great longing. They keep on longing for things all the time. And then the, these short moments when the longing stops and you say, finally.